when a dog limps um, and you're unsure, I guess I can turn the clippers off since I'm being not using them. Uh, a dog limps and you're not sure where it is, you always start at the, the very bottom of the foot, the toes, and make sure there's not a broken nail and the toes aren't swollen. You can look uh, in between the pads, um, and sometimes you need a little water, you need to wash it up. What water does is amazing things. If you wet down a pot with, you don't have to use gauze, but just use some wet, wa some wet water, some water, you can, it will wet down the hair and make everything so much more visible. So there is some inflammation. You can see redness right in here. So when dogs run on surfaces uh, that have rocks and dirt, sometimes they'll inflame their, their uh, place in between their pads just a little bit. So in, you can see this, this area here, see how it's uh, inflamed and uh, this area it's scraped a little bit from running on rough surfaces. Let's see what the other side looks like. And this is actually worn down. See, now that was even hard to see until I just now, um, I thought it was pigment. See, there's a scrape. And it hurts. So that's the source of the problem. He bruised and scraped a pad. And sometimes you can't see that till you wet everything down. Real common. I see scraped pads and um, about, shoot, during this time of year, about twice a week or three times a week. So you can uh, wash everything out and then you can put some Neosporin or other antibiotics on that. You probably don't have this giant size ointment like I do, but that's because I use it a lot. But you want to put a little bit on in between the pad. And most dogs are not as sweet as this dog. So you rub it around in those areas and the inflamed areas and usually it'll take care of everything. You can actually buy a, uh, a bandage from the, the, the pet store. They have Velcro booties you can put on which will protect that. So we're going to walk, it, walk him and, and see how the owner says he's really lame. And you can walk him towards me, Carla. Come on, Michael. You know, he says, I want to go back there. I don't want to go towards the doctor. I don't want to go towards the doctor. So, well, he's not showing us if he's lame or not. Why don't you walk him right past me? I think he's camera shot. Come here, Michael. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm hiding. Buckle. Hey, come. Okay, I'll get behind him. Come on. He doesn't want to go, do you? Okay, Bucko. We're now. Outside. You want to go this way? Okay, let's go this way. Oh, that's our cat. That's our office cat. Don't eat our cat. Let's see if you're lame. Tails in the air, walking nice and smoothly. He's looking at all of his friends out here. He's going to turn around and walk towards me. Looks pretty good. This little girl is sleepy. I gave her Dex Dormitor and she's laying so quietly. Are you in there? I'm just laying there. Happy as can be. Come in today. Well, she's got a wound right between her toes. Really common for dogs in California to have wounds between their toes. And once the wound abscesses between the toes, it can also come out the back. The back one, you can see the front of it actually will come out the top. That's gross. How oh, I can feel a little burr. This is what was deep within that foot causing it to abscess. So we use some pain reliever and antibiotics and this should heal up now that that, that burr is not uh, festering inside the wound. I'm at home today and my dogs are not spoiled. Well, let's go show, let's go see the kind of things that, that may cause problems when you walk dogs. Reggie, you want to go for a walk?
So the different surface that Reggie can walk on is this asphalt, the levee path. Sometimes you can encounter walkers. Uh, today's not too busy. You can see, I don't know if you can see in the distance somebody's walking a dog, but um, dogs can transmit nose to nose, they can transmit um, kennel cough, and also they can transmit giardia, which in their poop, or they can transmit parvovirus. So if you have a young unvaccinated dog, these aren't the types of places to walk. But these are great uh, smooth surfaces, they can get hot. Sometimes there's rocks and cracks that can cause issues with their feet and can cause blisters on their pads or can cause um, actually sores inside. But that's more this surface, the gravelly surface. That will cause the rocks in between will get up, the gravel's loose, and it'll get in between their pads, and it can cause them to, um, their pads to get inflamed and sore. And then, of course, as you saw, these weeds along the edges. If your dog has really hairy feet, um, then it's better to you make sure and check on it because you can miss um, you can miss these weeds getting caught up there and they'll cause those wounds we talked about. So you got to wet them down, right, Reggie? And I missed one like I showed you. I missed one on Reggie's foot right down there, and you can see the yellow stain where he lit Laurie licking it, and you can see the little wound on top. And Daddy missed that. Daddy Veterinarian, the bad pet owner, missed that. So if you plan to take your dog down through this kind of terrain, then you always should check in between their feet. Just after a short little walk, you can see they can get stuck up into the, uh, between the toes, and they're still a little green, but they can get in their ears. Look at his ears, how it's open there. Uh, fox tells us he's going through there. A uh, fox tell me go right into that ear and then go down in there. Uh, sometimes if that happens, does your dog pee this much? Uh, if that happens, you can put oil in it. Or... The thing with the gravel is some dogs that aren't used to walking on this kind of surface, these little rocks, the rocks and the gravel will go up between their pads, up into their pads, I mean, and it will cause some irritation. Well, I just wanted to kind of point out every year around this time we get dogs that are starting to go out and be walked and asphalt can get hot. Um, make sure not take, don't take a bulldogs and short nosed dogs, brachycephalic dogs out on, a, out on a hot day. They get overheated really quickly. Young dogs that are unvaccinated uh, should stay around home or go to places where there's older dogs that are vaccinated to be socialized but they shouldn't just go out to these public places like parks and schools and levees like I was showing you because they can get parvovirus. Uh, older dogs can um, get kennel cough from being out being walked on these types of areas where there's dog parks or groomers or boarding anywhere there's a collection of dogs they can get kennel cough so keep their kennel cough shot or their Bordetella bronchoseptica vaccine up for these types of activities. Uh, you can see that uh, different surfaces can cause injuries to dogs feet. Uh, the, the pads can get scraped and blistered and they can get plant seeds that can get between the toes and burrow in. So you have to wet down your dog's feet, keep them shaved up or um, uh, always check them after you go out. Uh, it's always good to check underneath too because fox kills foxtails are the plant seeds we get here in California can be everywhere. Anyway, well, if you get a chance, check out dogdishdiet.com. have a brand new book that's published in May, Updated Dog Dish Diet. It's called Dog Diet Answer Book, and uh, it's available on the website and also amazon.com. Have a great day.